Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. I am attorney Nick Sally and I'm here with my friends and colleagues Kana Lavolsi and Parker Golson of the Interim Expert Team. Today we have a very special guest and we're so excited to have him on. We have Amos Schwarzbarb. He is the Managing Director of Techstars uh, and he is also the author of Sell More Faster. And yes, he is an Austin night, honey. So we are so happy to have him here today. And with that, I'll kick it over to Kana to start. All right. Thanks, Nick. Um, so again, as I just want to enter, reiterate that we're excited to have you here today, Amos. Um, it was wonderful talking to you yesterday, and we're excited for this conversation today. Um, so what, So just to kind of jump right in, again, this series is about kind of informing people in a, um, in a really just straightforward by the numbers and um, personal emotion way rather than um, like media slants. Uh, so today we just want this to be as um, candid as possible. Um, so, um, so for the first question, um, kind of what are your observations on where money is being spent and what trends are emerging in this current environment? Uh, and when you say money is being spent, you mean specifically like in terms of investing in companies or like as us consumers on the street? Um, well, it's kind of both, right? Like they're pretty right. tied together. Yeah. So I guess just if you want to talk about, um, I'll just touch on both areas. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm sure I'm far from alone in this, but I was having a conversation with my dad yesterday and we were just both sort of saying like the amount of money that we're spending is, is you know, like our, 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 personal operating expenses have gone down a lot because we're not going out. We're not doing yep. really anything. That being said, the number of boxes that show up at my house on a regular basis. And a lot of that is driven by me, which yeah. is not, which is not common for our household uh, is, is increased a lot. And, you know, in, in the things that are personally that we're spending money on in the house are things that help us get outside frankly, like, you know, mm -hmm. like what, if it's, we're going to go somewhere, we're going to get, you know, so we're going to get out of town. What are the things that we need so that we make it as comfortable as possible? Um, and, and I think, you know, we're probably eating, I mean, we're probably eating in a lot more. We were already liked to cook and stuff, but as a family, we're cooking a lot more than we even were before. Um, for lots of reasons, you know, a little bit safety, but we're also trying to be conscious of like how to, who, you know, who do we need to support locally that we don't, you know, we want to make sure that they're around. Um, and then from, you know, from an investment perspective, I think the, the, the biggest trend that I'm seeing, I'm really, really pleased with, which is, and, and it's hard for some entrepreneurs to hear this, but it's, it's companies that have always had a focus on, on the economics of their business and not just their idea. And, um, and I realize that's hard for some entrepreneurs to hear, but the reality is if you're building a business, a business needs to have economics that makes sense for it to be around long term and not just a cool idea that you're trying to figure out how to monetize. Sometimes that works. It is really, 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 really rare. Uh, and I'm pleased by that because those are the kinds of companies that I like to work with. We couldn't agree more. It's just, I, it's, it's time that things moved in that direction. Yeah. Um, so I think just to follow that up, I think we want to deep dive into the catchphrase of the year, which is pivot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of us have had to do that. And so we really want to just get into like what pivots have you needed to make to accommodate what's happening. Um, we just love to hear your, your thoughts on kind of that experience of actually needing to make those changes. Yeah. You know, I, the word pivot is an interesting one to me. When I think of pivot, I think of taking a thing and doing something completely different with that thing. I think the word pivot specifically in the startup world gets, gets overused when really what we're talking about is evolution of a business and iteration of a business as you learn what you need to do to get to some form of repeatability to be long-term and sustainable. And so with that in mind, like to answer your question, we've all had to evolve the things that we're doing. Some people have for sure pivoted. Yeah. 100%. I think that the, the thing that I'm seeing, at least, you know, my portfolio, my portfolio is, you know, probably 70 companies or so, is an evolution or an iteration of how they were doing business before relative to how they need to do business today. Um, right. 
and I'm trying to think of a, a you know, a, a couple of examples of that. There's a company in my portfolio, Helper Bees, and you know, th this has been a great thing for them as a business because they're they are they were an early telemedicine platform specifically for um, elderly that are trying to stay home versus move to a nursing home. For them, there has been a major iteration in their business really just an acceleration to where they thought they were going to be in five or seven years from now they're now they're a lot earlier so there's things they have to do in order to evolve to that um i think so i think you know the 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 thing that i've seen the most in the companies that i work with is they've they have an understanding of how the, the business mechanics work and the value that they're they're exchanging with their customer set they're, they're having to get a different kind of understanding of how that, what that value means to that customer now, and then take that new understanding and say, okay, do I still add value or what in the things that I do are now more value add than they were before, which is what happened with, with helper bees, right? They have this thing that now is more valuable than it was prior to people being able to go somewhere else. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, yeah, that's great. Um, I agree. Pivot's been overused. Um, it's also been a thing of the words that you offered, I think, are much more accurate. It's, it's about having to um, really take a look at your value prop and iterate on what you're doing. Um, so that was really, really, really thoughtful. Um, Kane, I'm going to pass it back to you. You have another, another good one for them. Great. Um, so then... In your opinion, what are the challenges you feel like we're facing as a city in particular uh, in Austin? I'm, I'm concerned and I think like, I feel like I'm gonna say this and is the most obvious thing to say. But like, one of the things that attracted me to, the, to, to Austin is, is the, the music scene and the nightlife and the restaurant scene and the, the you know the, the social behaviors as creatures that we have of going out and enjoying our wonderful city and you know looking forward three or five years from now i am sure that we will we will be back to you know some form of that maybe sooner you know the thing that concerns me are the people that are being affected that aren't able to keep their their businesses open. I think there's a couple of flavors of that, right? I think there are, there are likely businesses that are shutting down earlier, you know, restaurants, bars that you know maybe they've owned it for a long time and they were they were looking for some exit, but this is forcing them to do something earlier than they want. Hopefully, in some cases, hopefully in most cases, it, it seems worse from the outside than it is from the inside. But I'm I'm worried about a, a large number of people that have you know sunk their life into you know the really the backbone of our city you know the the economy of getting people outside and, and interacting with one another um in the sh very very short term i'm also worried about you know all the people that you know the that work at those places that are part of the gig economy that are you know that are trying to figure out n new ways to to get income i'm not worried about them in the mid and long term i think this will all come back i'm sure it will all come back you know it'll evolve it'll iterate <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, I think the thing that makes me the, the most concerned are, is, are the people that have sunk their life into, you know, bars and restaurants and, and different sort of social venues that, you know, it's going to be really hard for them to rebound from that. And what, you know, what do we do to support them? And I, and I don't know that we're doing enough yet, but hopefully we'll get there. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, so I'll go ahead and ask, uh, what do you feel like that you had or did not have in your toolkit? Kind of in the start of spring that you wish you did. Um, I I wish I had a a much larger and I, a much larger quiver of people who could stand s strong and be basically therapists, but really empathetic to to the people that were having challenges. Um, and I, and I, and I, it's a, it's a hard one to say like that because I, I, you know, at Texas, I work with so many wonderful, wonderful mentors that help support our community and they're awesome. And we rely on them. We cannot do what we do without them. And so many of them had to figure out, you know, their own businesses and all and, 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 and navigate this themselves. 
and um and it is a lot for someone to you know for a single person to take on someone else's challenging times and help them through it emotionally and mentally and you know strat you know strategically so i think you know i i think i had a big quiver and i, I wish it was five times as, as big because i just think there are so many people and i think you know now um so sorry uh, sorry about that no worries <laughs> i thought that was off um, no worries i um I, it'll make for good TV, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, um, I think you know, now we're six months, we're six months later and a lot of the people who were there giving are now worn out themselves and, um, finding more people. I mean, we're just all in need right now in, in, in different levels of need. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of rambling on in the same point, but I just, I, I just think, the more more people to just be really empathetic and open-minded and you know caring regardless of you know what you if you believe COVID is real or not or your political views are like doesn't matter like we're all humans at the end of the day mm -hmm. yeah and i think i think that's something really important to keep in mind right now um i think personally everyone's kind of in a place that they've never been in um and it really is just that unification i feel like yeah. So Amos, to wrap things up, we wanted to make sure we had time to ask you about something really exciting, which is your book, Sell More Faster. We would just love if you could touch on some of the highlights of that book and why you wrote it and what you know the desired outcome is, what you're really wanting to tell people through through such an important work. Oh yeah. Um so I I, I really wrote it for one core reason, which is that over the course of the, the last, you know, decade, a little bit less, maybe, I get asked a lot of the same questions specific to sales. I've, I've been doing early stage sales for a long, long time. And I wanted to, you know, it's, it's sort of like when you think about a business, like I, I, I figured out how to do something manually and I wanted to figure out how to get to repeatability. And so I thought by having the, the, you know, the words that I'm always saying over and over again in a written format, I would be able to um, enable more founders and entrepreneurs to figure, figure it out. And, you know, that was my hope. I didn't know if that's, you know, if I would achieve that or not. Um, and, and the, and I would say, you know, this is, that, that was my hope. That was my goal. And I would say that I, I feel like I am, on the path to achieving that. I, I, I get a lot of really nice compliments about the book and what it has done to impact people's approaches on their business and how it's directly affected growth in their business. And specifically through this time, I get a lot of that, which is we had to rethink who our customers were to, to your earlier question. And it's a good framework to think that through. And, and so to, to the last part of your question, which is you know one takeaway from the book, the the probably the in my opinion the most important part of the book is is chapter one which is just a framework to think about how do you even think about who your right customer might be and how do you go figure that out once you have that a lot of the pieces the, the rest of the book is useless until you figure that out you don't even read it but once you start to figure that out um the rest of it comes into play and you actually have a chance of creating a real and meaningful business and, and i get feedback on that specifically a lot and so that's been I feel like I, I'm, I'm very satisfied with where it is to, so far. Amazing. I feel like one of the things we really connected on yesterday on our call was the fact that uh, you also just really want to help real people get real results, as you put it. Um, yeah. And I know that this week on Thursday, you're doing a, a talk. Are you, and you're, you seem to be doing a lot of talking. Is, do you feel like everything you're speaking on um, is being addressed in your book, or do you feel like you'll have a whole series coming out? Yeah, I actually do have a, another book coming out in the spring. I have um, three co-authors, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. I have three co-authors on it, um, Trevor Baim, uh, Troy Hanikoff, and Cody Sims. And what it really is, is over the course of all of our careers, we've, we've sort of all centered on there's five things that actually matter in a business um, in, if you want to have a chance of having a successful business. And so the book is really just taking those five things and creating a five-chapter book. 
so the workshop you're talking about that is happening on Thursday is, is uh, chapter two of the book. So it's the first is out of somewhere faster, which is who, how do you figure out who your customer, you think your customer is going to be and how do you get data to prove it? The second is what do you believe your business model will be or your revenue formula at scale? And then what are all the drivers and sub drivers of your revenue formula so that you can start to get an understanding of all of the things that you actually need to do to, to prove whether or not your business is viable. The third thing is taking all of everything from the first two workshops, the, the first two concepts and um, organizing it in a way to say, what, what are the, the critical assumptions? What do I have validated? What's not validated? And how do I prioritize it? So a shorter way to say that is what, I, what do I do now and next? The next thing is how do I measure that progress? So if I'm doing stuff, how do I know if I'm right or wrong? So a really simple framework around figuring out KPIs, both short-term and long-term. And then the final piece, which is I think really what it all culminates to is how do you take all of that and build a data-driven financial model and plan so that you actually have a blueprint to run your business? Knowing that early on, you don't actually know if it's right or wrong, but you have a blueprint to measure again so that you, you're on a path to repeatability and predictability of your business. And so I, this is the, the thing that I love working with entrepreneurs on. This is where I spend all of my 100% of my time now when I work with the founders that I work with at, uh, at Techstars and outside of Techstars. Amazing. Who do you feel like the, the, um, the core audience is for your book? Who do you think benefits the most? Um, the, it, the, the audience that I believe will benefit the most are companies and they do not have to be tech companies um but in, in fact i think that there's there's a whole tangent here that i think there's a whole population that hasn't been addressed with things like accelerators for in terms of like just basic business education but founders that have revenue they're generating revenue already they have a line of sight for revenue for at least six to nine months and the reason is because if they're stressed out about whether they're going to stay in business it's going to be harder to work on the business um, and ideally there are, uh, there's, you know, obviously someone running the company and at least one other person who is sort of like an operator of strategic mind with them, you know, at a senior level so they can work on it together and then trickle that down. And ideally there's more than two people, but at minimum, uh, two people. So it works for early stage companies. It works for later stage companies, but I really think the sweet spot is companies and I'll say it differently companies that have revenue and haven't figured out repeatability and they want to figure that out. Excellent. Well, thank you so much um, for that. I think, I mean, that covers most of the big questions we had for you. You knocked it out of the park for sure. Um, Kana, do you have anything else, Parker, before I close? Um, I think that's it for me. I think this was really insightful uh, to kick off this series. And um, I really look forward to connecting with you, Amos, as well in the future. Um, I think we could really talk about a lot of interesting things beyond even this. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I just have one more question. So um, with everything you're seeing, and you were talking about kind of smaller teams being the ones that really benefit from your book, do you see more uh, collaboration happening in businesses and more like um, use of service providers and specialists and um, experts like yourself coming in and advising rather than building out a full teams as we move forward? Do you think it'll be... Um, back to the other norm. You know, I, I've, it's interesting because I've seen that trend. I saw that trend starting to happen already. It has absolutely gotten um, accelerated over the last six months, but I started to see that a lot probably in the last 18 months or so where there's fractional X for literally everything. And, um, you know, there's a part of me that hopes it continues. Um, there are the, the the challenge with it is I think there are some things that are critical to bring in house and and sometimes those like I use an example I think it's really it's it's next to impossible to um, get a fractional sales leader for any company when you're starting to when you're just figuring stuff out and probably ever but there are a lot of people sometimes myself included who can go and be a fractional sales leader for a company and be decently effective but I think. If you're trying to build a long-term and sustainable business, it's hard. That's one that's really hard. But there are other areas of the business where I think it's it's great to be able to do that. Um, but it's not as easy as, as flicking a light switch, right? You can't just say I'm going to hire a dev team, which is the one that's been around the longest, right? You need someone that's going to manage that dev team and understand product development, be able to really drive the roadmap. Otherwise, it falls apart and you spend more money. So, I do hope it continues. Um, and I, I think probably what will happen is there'll be an, another, another role that evolves, which is someone, you know, an expertise level 
inside or outside of a company that manages those relationships to make them more like their internal relationships. Absolutely. Uh, we couldn't agree more. Uh, thank you so much. You've had really great insight today. Uh, for one last question, you may not have anything for it, um, but are there any big numbers or trends that just totally surprised you with all of this that just seemed out of nowhere? Just for fun facts. Yeah. Um, nothing that's coming to mind. I'm sure there are lots, but nothing that's like hitting me in the face. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amos, for your generous, generous insights. We really appreciate you contributing to our series. Um, yeah, it, it's been really great to hear from you and wishing you all the best uh, with your books and everything that's going on. Um, thank you all for joining today. We are the interim expert team and we will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Thank you for having me. Thank Bye. you so much. This was Bye. great.